Hi guys, my name is Lucy from Japan and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to share with you six mysteries about the most useless and worthless public organization in Japan. It is the Imperial Household Agency. The Imperial Household Agency is the government organization responsible for everything related to the Imperial Household and Imperial members. This organization is not only useless but even harmful to the people of Japan or maybe also harmful to overseas government because the officers of Imperial Household Agency often send the unwelcomed family members of Akishino family even though the invitation is addressed to the Emperor Naruhito and Empress Masako. The Imperial Household Agency is responsible for these three laws. Number one, to take care of the activities of the Emperor and Empress and other members of the Imperial family. Number two, to carry on Japanese culture and traditions. Number three, to manage and maintain facilities related to the Imperial family. So let's check out the mysteries of this organization. Number one, too many people. Currently, there are only 17 members of the Imperial family, including the Emperor and Empress, but the Imperial Household Agency has a total of about 1,050 employees to take care of just 17 members of the Imperial family. This means that for each member of the Imperial member has 61 employees in average. Of course, not all of these approximately 1,000 people are taking care of the Imperial family. Some of them are carrying on traditions or managing facilities. So there are not actually an average of 61 staff members for each member of the Imperial family. But even so, it is still surprising to know that so many people are working for Imperial Household Agencies. In Japan, the government is currently considering accepting immigrants because of the labor shortage caused by the aging of the population. I wonder what all of these employees are doing on a daily basis. Also, the 17 members of the Imperial family, five are over 80 years old. And there will be 12 members in near future. And thinking about empty-headed Japanese politicians, there will probably be no reduction of these people even then, and maybe at that time, there will be about 100 employees per person serving for the imperial family. The biggest mystery is that retired Emperor Akihito and Michiko, who have no official duties, they are already retired, and they are 89 and 88 years old, still have 60 staff members and 6 doctors serving for only these two. And no one can suggest that they should reduce the employees. It is truly a waste of taxpayers' money. Number two, the magic power to turn any elite into a message pigeon. Most of the senior officers of the Imperial Household Agency are elite from other government organizations who have been transferred to the Imperial Household Agency. It seems that most of these officers come from the National Police Agency or the Ministry of Foreign Affairs because these two organizations have a deep relationship with the Imperial Household Agency. One is to provide security for the Imperial family and the other is to deal with overseas loyal families. And most of them are University of Tokyo or Kyoto University graduates. These two universities are the first and second highest ranking universities in Japan and they have the smartest brains in Japan. However, unfortunately, two witches of Imperial members are living there. One is retired Empress Michiko and the other is Kiko, the wife of Akishiro. 
and these witches have magical powers and can transform any wise person into a message pigeon. The elite bureaucrats who become the message pigeons are forbidden to think by themselves and they simply become the pigeons with no brain that carry the witch's message to the people. The only word they are allowed to say is yes sir and yes ma'am. But there is a hope for these message pigeons. If they work there for four or five years, they will be introduced to their next job, which is an easy and good paying job as reward. Number three, all of them are sexist. The imperial household agency is still sticking to the evil rule of male-only succession, which is 110 years old law. To them, the crown princess is a machine to produce a male heir, and if she cannot produce a boy, they deny her all other personalities and human rights. Their sexism was once pointed out by United Nations in the past. This is so scary and outdated. On the contrary, as long as a boy is produced, even by gender selection, which is unethical and prohibited by law, is welcome. This is exactly what is happening in Japan. The imperial household agency values Kiko, who produced baby boy Hisahito by gender selection, more than Emperor Naruhito and Empress Masako, who have only a daughter, Princess Aiko. For the imperial household agency, any personality is acceptable as long as it has male reproductive organs. Even if the produced boy was accused of plagiarism in an award-winning essay contest, and even if the boy used the back door to enter Japan's top-ranking high school using imperial privileges, the imperial household agency ignores all criticism from the public and decorate Prince Hisahito with fake, beautiful stories. They believe that this sexism is a tradition and unaware that what they have done is major violation of human rights of females from a worldwide point of view. And the Japanese government, which oversees the Imperial Household Agency to promote the creation of a society where all women can shine, but it is a huge contradiction that they aim to create a society where all women can shine, but women cannot be the emperor. Number four, building walls, not bridges. The original law of the imperial household agency is to serve as a bridge between the imperial family and the people of Japan, bringing the people's voice to the imperial family and informing the people about the truth of the imperial family. But instead of building bridges between the imperial family and the people, they are constructing a great wall like the Great Wall of China. They have completely ignored the public complaints against the Akishino family that are spreading all over social media and have quit accepting phone calls. Even when we sent a petition to them, none of us got a reply. So they ignore everything and never listen to us. And they give one-sided message from the imperial family. I think in the near future, the great war that imperial household agency has built between the people of Japan and the imperial family will be registered on the world heritage list. Number five, they never have DNA testing to male members of the imperial family, even though male genes are so important. The imperial household agency is sexist and is convinced that the male lineage must be male. Or else, the 2600 years of the imperial reign will be broken. However, there are trending tweets on social media that Prince Akishino, currently number one in a line of succession to the throne, does not look like his father, the retired Emperor Akihito. The rumor is that Prince Akishino looked exactly like her mother, Michiko's sister's husband. 
He is Michiko's younger brother-in-law, so he has no biological relationship to Michiko and is a stranger biologically. And according to the comparison photos, Prince Akishino looks exactly like Michiko's brother-in-law in every way such as facial parts, height, body structure, behavioral habits. The Imperial Household Agency must have heard these rumors. And in order to deny these disgraceful rumors, the agency must have DNA tests on Prince Akishino to prove the legitimacy of his lineage. But they are ignoring these rumors. If Akishino were the child of a man unrelated to the retired Emperor Akihito, the genes of the 2600 years long imperial line will be cut off. And it is a big mystery that these Supposedly smart people do not understand the importance of this issue. Number six, strong press restriction despite being a public organization. The Imperial Household Agency is a public organization and is 100% funded by tax money. Surprisingly, Despite being a public organization, the Imperial Household Agency clearly regulates the press and has its own member-only press club called the Imperial Household Press Association. Only 15 TV stations and newspaper companies are members of the Imperial Household Press Association and only these 15 companies cover the Imperial family. The Imperial Household Agency manages to prevent news that is unfavorable to the Imperial family from leaking out by allowing only the Imperial Household Press Association to cover the Imperial family. If a member of the Imperial Household Press Association pursues any allegation involving the Imperial family or reports the truth that is inconvenient to the Imperial family, that media company will be removed from membership in the press association. However, freelance journalists, the media outside the Imperial Household Press Association, and the public are all taxpayers. And the taxes we paid are supporting the Imperial Household Agency financially. So I think any of us have the right to know why large amount of taxpayers' money are being spent on the Akishino family. And the Imperial Household Agency officers and the lawyer family are obligated to answer the questions from the people. It is a mystery that an organization that is 100% funded by taxpayers' money is allowed to hide so many things from the public and to run away from the questions that are inconvenient, saying that they do not know the answers or cannot answer them. These six mysteries are the reality happening in Japan today, and people are so frustrated. We hope that the foreign media will take an interest and spread the news about this issue. That's all I'd like to say today. Thank you for watching and don't forget to like the video. And if you want to know more truths of Japanese imperial family, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you. Have a nice day. Bye bye.